Hello world, this is Jeffrey, JJB146, Blake for Hoopa Hideout, and today I'm coming to you with a tool that I think can completely redefine your testing experience. So this is something you can do when you're not with a group, when you're not testing with other people, and you want to get some reps in, you want to like, you know, tear through some games to get more experience with an archetype or a matchup or uh, however you want to do that. There's been a lot of great advice from pros throughout the the years that have been, you know, solo games with your cards. I think that's a valuable thing, but you're only seeing, you know, you're basically testing your setup and that's it. You want to get that down. You want to have your way. You want to know your ways around different setups, but that's not all you need to practice. So soloing setup, solitaire, uh, card play, not the best. You can speed that up if you use like a limitless simula simulator or even other simulator tools. Uh, but I think this tool is better. Another thing that I've seen some pros recommend that I think is, is great, uh, is playing against yourself, right? So you're moving, if you're doing an IRL, you're moving cards around, handling both sides of the board state, having to maintain, you know, like two separate play mats worth of cards and it's clunky, but it gets the job done and it helps you understand things. Uh, I have seen people that even like played on a lazy Susan style table where they'd have one setup and then on the other side of the table was the other setup and it was on a spinner, right? It would just spin the table around. So when they needed to switch turns, all they had to do was, you know, spin it. And that, that's cool. That's neat. It's a table design that I've thought about trying to make myself, but again, you're still slow because you're manipulating physical cards. That's good. You need to know how to do that. But for what we're trying to talk about with actually just like tearing through and getting rep after rep after rep to see the lines, to cement them in your brain, uh, we can do better than spending, you know, an hour soloing for a best of three against ourselves, even 45 minutes, whatever it ends up taking, uh, we can do better. Right. And, and better is basically any simulator out there. Right. Um, again, a lot of pros. Specifically, I'm going to shout out Celio's network because he's talked about the concept of opening two limitless simulator windows and clicking back and forth between them to manipulate both sides of the board as a faster way to sort of solo play. Again, great idea, gets the job done. But what we have here with TCGmasters.net is a whole different ball game. So. Uh, the Twitter account is actually masters underscore TCG and the website is tcgmasters.net. Everything is automated and you're playing both sides. And when I say automated, we'll, we'll dig in real quick. Uh, but you can see we just got an update 15 minutes ago where he has implemented and tested all of the cards in every deck from NAIC. Now, most of those were already there, uh, but he wanted to do some final testing. I say he, I should be saying they, right? I don't know if the developer is male or female. They want to stay anonymous and I respect that. And the second that they change their mind on that, I will do my best to have them, you know, do an episode with them because we've been communicating back and forth a lot lately because once I found this tool and started, you know, saying, Hey, could you fix this little bug? Uh, it's been a lot of back and forth and what I want to say is that they are very, very responsive to fixing things, to adding in cards that weren't supported because, you know, who randomly supports cards that were from two years ago, like a random common from two years before, uh, the tool was created, right? They do a great job about anything that's in standard that they don't support currently. They will very quickly. I've never had to wait more than a day for them to add a card or fix a bug. Oftentimes it's just a matter of hours. So uh, quick to update, you, you see it takes forever to get things fixed on PTCG Live. That's not the case here. Now I'm sure as more eyes get on it and more little quirks get uncovered, it'll start to take a little bit longer because this is all one person, but still like I've been blown away by the responsiveness and how fast it is to get games in. Uh, you can see we've got two photos here, two screenshots. Uh, one is the actual screen that you see when you first open up the, the tool, when you first go to the website. And by the way, this works fabulously on mobile. Um, that's primarily how I 
interact with the tool. I do some on desktop, but mostly it's on mobile. And then uh, the second screenshot is actually an in-game screenshot. And you can see we have links to look at both sides, discard, lost zone, how many prizes, how many cards are in deck, how many cards are in hand, and cards that are enabled are highlighted, but there's no other, like, Like it doesn't hold your hand beyond that. Um, like it, it'll show, it shows a down arrow when an ability has been used, but it doesn't like, it doesn't have to like, oh, click on me. Cause I have something I can do. You have to know that you have abilities that you can use. Um, we do, you do get this little helper box in all the scenarios that I've seen where I would need it. Uh, it, it helps with how many relevant cards are in your discard. So here it's Gardevoir EX. So the helper box is showing how many psychic energies are in the discard. If this were an ancient Pokemon, um, specifically uh, Baby Roaring Moon, right? If it were Baby Roaring Moon, this little box would be saying how many ancient Pokemon there are in the discard. Um, and then other similar, similar effects, like similar tie-ins would be represented the same way. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I'm sure there are some. I would guess that United Wings is, is done similarly, for instance. Um, but you, so you, I mean, you just click cards and it, it goes, but rather than me continuing to tell you about it based on pictures, let's go ahead and do a quick run through. So again, this is the screen you see when you first load in, uh, we've got a list on one side and a list on the other side. And these are the two decks. Whatever is on the left will be going first, and then the list on the right will be going second. Uh, we'll go ahead and just stick with these first two initially. And uh, so we'll see Andrew Hedrick's first place Lost Zone deck against Stefan Ivanov's second place Gardevoir deck. All you have to do, like I didn't, you don't have to click any. If this is the matchup you want to test, you just come, you hit play, and it starts a game. So here, we have multiple basics on both sides. If, if the other side had had only one basic, then it would have gone ahead. It would have shown like it would have put their starter out. Uh, but both sides have, Oh no, it didn't. We had to make our decision before we saw their Pokemon. So that's cool. And then, like I said, we start with the, um, lost on side cause it was on the left, right? To do anything, you click the card and it takes care of it, right? Pokey gear. You get a quick pop-up search, click the one you want, and it's done. Um, I don't think I want to bench Ursaluna. We're against Guardi, so we know we can't get knocked out this turn. Uh, so we're just going to click finish turn, and it swaps right away to the other side. Uh, we will go ahead and attach a Dark Energy. Now, if there were multiple Pokemon out, it would have asked, where do you want to attach it? But since there are not, it did not. Um, Iono, lots of energy. We get the Buddy Buddy Poffin. And here we see a search interface now. Um, so you can do price checking this way. There's no like easier way unless we have a card that shows our prizes, assuming heavy ball, for instance, and they're not sorted, but you see a large number of cards. So you can figure out pretty quickly, especially when it's highlighting things, right? Uh, so we know that there's a Ralts prized. Looking through, there's two Curlia, three Curlia, four Curlia, no Curlia are prized. There's one Gardevoir, two Gardevoir, no Gardevoir are prized. Um, Drifloon's here. We see Klefki and we see the um, Fluttermane. Uh, but I don't see Screamtail anywhere. So looks like Screamtail is prized. Oh, no, there's Screamtail. Um, Radiant Greninja is in there. Cresselia is in there. So I mean, that quickly, we've basically verified all of our, all of our Pokemon significantly more quickly than would be done IRL. Uh, if I knew the list, like firmly, I'd be able to go through that process even faster than I did. Uh, but the one thing I'll caution you on is when you're trying to prize check, you need to do it before selecting your cards. Cause as soon as I select the second one, it goes away. Um, that's not a bug. It's a feature <laughs> to try to streamline things, but it can make the, the actual tool perform differently than you might otherwise expect. There are times that I'm trying to do some, you know, checking for a card here or there, and I am in the habit of selecting my cards before I finish my deck check. Uh, so I like pull the cards I'm going to select to the front or even on 
BTCG Live, I'll click them since I know that timer is going to tick down and I want to be able to go, oh, one second left, okay, click if I need to get that far. Don't do that here because it'll dismiss the window and you won't be able to perform your deck check from there. But anyway, um, so we're going to finish turn. I'm going to go through this turn more quickly. We want Greninja. We want a Comfy. We want this Comfy. Uh, we're going to Colorus. Off of Colorus, we want another Colorus. Uh, let's save the Lightning Energy and let's get Pokestop. Okay. We already had a Pokestop. You know what? I was trying to go fast. I wouldn't have made that mistake and grabbed a Pokestop if we already had one in hand in an actual event. So I'm going to undo. All right. I can redo the Colorus. And uh, this is something that a lot of pros have said is bad about simulators, bad about online testing. So you can't check an alternate line if you do something that's permanent. That's not the case here. We can undo multiple steps. Look, undid the Colorus. Oh, we undid the benching. Undid that bench. Undid all the nest balls. Wait, what? Gardevoir needed to do something else? We undid that. Gardevoir hasn't finished their turn yet. Uh, so you can stream through testing out multiple lines this way really fast. Um, like I said, I mean, we can see what happens if we Pokestop before we call us. Oh, we discarded everything. Well, that wasn't the right sequencing. Let's undo it. Now, should we call us or Nest Ball? We need more Pokemon, so we should Nest Ball first, but we can call us first. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we're happy with that. We shouldn't be, because again, we sequence poorly, blah, 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 blah. But uh, we can do it multiple ways and see how it works out. Um, so that you can get that experience of knowing what's the right way to do things and go from there. And uh, I guess the last note on this point is that it does actually preserve the shuffle order. So like it's, it's randomized, it's shuffled every time it's supposed to shuffle, but it does preserve. Like if we go back, we undo. I think here was our first, when we call her that first time should be the same set of cards. Okay. That's not right then. Um, oh, cause we pokey stopped. Uh, by the way, I clicked out this window went away, went over to the side. It wouldn't let me do anything before I made the selections. Um, but I, th I think you get the point that, um, uh, it's a very clean, quick interface. And that's basically all I was trying to get across. Um, so from here, say we wanted to, like we reach the end of the game, we want to play again. You just click restart, starts again. Once again, the same side is going to, so once we select our starter, it goes back. The loss on side is always going to go first. It's not randomized. You have to pick, but you can also click restart and swap. And now Gardevoir is going first. So if you get here, um, you can't click on this when there are unresolved questions, like what are the starting Pokemon? But if you get here, like you can always roll a, a die yourself, right? I've got a die here. Uh, say Lost Zone is heads, Lost Zone goes first. So I roll it and it came up tails. So Gardevoir is supposed to go first. So this is fine. Um, but if it had come up heads, I could click here, restart and swap and and we'd switch right away. Um, we have it listing the mulligans, how many each side took. So you can account, you could account for that by counting your cards, but it, it's shown here to both players at the beginning of the game. Uh, that's a recent change because I suggested it and he had it done in like an hour. He, they, the developer. Um, so again, from here, you can select the decks that you want to play, right? This, we're back to the main screen. I don't know what custom, I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know what custom means, but you can go in and select any of the decks that he has preloaded, or you can select from decks that you have loaded in, All right? Dragon Ball, Dual, uh, these are decks that I input. It's, it's just the same process, right? You pick your decks and then you hit play. And now we're playing a Dragapult list that I, that I previously loaded, right? Um, I'm going to open up Limitless real quick to get some more deck lists. 
Uh, let's get this Charizard list. We'll copy it, and we'll come here. We're going to select all, delete, paste, click import. I don't know what the import does actually, but then we hit play and we're rolling with the Charizard list. Um, I, I don't think we saved this Charizard list, but we can. So uh, the other thing you can do here, you can look at all the cards that he has implemented by clicking implemented cards. Uh, you can filter this list to check specific things. Uh, but you'll see, obviously, there are going to be some cards that are missing. Just talk to him if you need more cards that are, on, that are not on here. And then you can create your own list of decks, right? So we have these decks. We still have, I'm going to make sure we still have it copied. Copy the clipboard. And we want to import a new deck, right? Import. We're going to call it... Charizard and then click OK. It imports everything straight from the clipboard and now we've got a Charizard deck over here. You can also manually create a deck. Um, call it whatever you want. All right. And you go through just like you would in any other environment where you're building a deck from scratch. Uh, say we were going to do a um, Reggie Drago list. We can't just type Reggie and search. It'll do partial matching. That's a lot of cards. I do see the Reggies. So we click one, two, three, four. Then we click the V star. Rainbow one's right there. Oh, that could have been that one instead. Um, it does total them together, but we can change the counts for the arts we want. Um, and then you just continue on searching for cards that you want. Um, so pretty quick to load in things. If a card is grayed out, that means that it is loaded into the overall card pool, but has not been set as implemented yet. So basically you can't play a deck using that card. Um, it'll fail. Um, so right there, we see not implemented one. That means that if we go to actually play this deck, it's not going to qualify. Um, and you'll, I believe, just get a random error. Um, so let's, let's find out though. Best deck ever. We're going to play this versus Stefan's list. Oh, we can't. It doesn't contain 60 cards. Okay. So we go back to my deck. And because this is the last deck we were looking at, it's what loads. Uh, but for any deck, you just load it up and you start making changes. You never have to save anything. As soon as you make a change, it is saved. Obviously, that can be bad if you make changes willy-nilly. Uh, but you can uh, rename things. You can export. If you export, it sends it to your clipboard so that you can import to make you know tweaks but maintain the original. Um, so you can load up different copies. Like I say, I use mostly use this on my phone. So here we've got six decks on my phone. I've got like 20, um, with like multiple versions of Gardevoir and multiple versions of Dragapult and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, that's about the size of it. Um, uh, again, every once in a while we'll find a problem. And if you do find anything that doesn't work the way you think it should just come here to masters underscore TCG report to the developer what went wrong and they will look into it very quickly. Uh, but this has been, I've gotten in hundreds of test games with every archetype that I or my students are considering, uh, were considering for an AC and are considering for worlds. Um, and it's just mind blowing how much faster testing can go than using basically anything else. So hopefully this transforms your game, makes you better able to prepare for tournaments. Uh, and uh, as always, thank you for watching. This has been Jeffrey, JGB146Blake, and I'll see you next time.